Hello and welcome back to another video taking another look at some of the details in the upcoming Test Drive Unlimited Solar Crown game. So in this video I wanted to take a closer look at the potential car list in the game. So I know I've done a video previously on thoughts about which cars and brands might be in the game. I uh, did a video on cars and a separate video on bikes. Um, this time I thought I'd try and put together um, a list of 150 cars that I kind of hope will be in the game that are likely to be in the game. So not just 150 cars that I like that are in the game, I'm putting things that I think will probably be in there. Um, so a sort of realistic um, wish list of vehicles in the game. So I have started with all the cars we already know, all the cars from the reveal and things we've seen on the website and through reveals and leaks and things. Put all of those in. Um, there are also a few bikes in the list but tried to narrow it down to 150 vehicles, um, a mixture of cars and bikes. So the reason I've gone for 150 um, is because of numbers of vehicles in previous test drive games and other games by KT Racing. So TDU1 um, had 150 vehicles, 155 vehicles in total, 101 at launch plus 54 DLC vehicles. TDU2 had 126 in total, 99 at launch and 27 DLC. V-Rally 4, um, another game by KT Racing, um, has 55 in total, 50 vehicles plus 5 DLCs. WRC 8, uh, another game by that studio, has 20 in total, 15 plus 5 DLC, which isn't really very much, but it's basically WRC cars. And their bike games, TT Isle of Man, the first one has 9, 7 plus 2 DLCs. DLC and the second game has 18, 17 plus one DLC bike. So that's why we're aiming for 150. Uh, it's more than the, the first two test drives basically had 101 and 99 at launch. So they had about 100 cars at launch um, and then had DLCs added later. So given this is slightly later, there's no reason why they can't have 50 more cars. Yes, I could have done a 200 car list or something, but narrowing it down to 150 at launch actually worked quite well and although it doesn't sound very much when compared to games like Forza which have 700 150 is actually quite a lot of cars um, which you, you realize a lot more when you start trying to put a list together um, but yeah like I say I started with cars that we already know from the reveal and from the website and leaks and tried to put in a few of the cars that we've had in both previous games um, but yeah these are the cars and bikes, um, all 150 of them, that I hope will be at the game. So as I go through each car, I'll give the kind of reason why I hope it's in there and whether it's been in previous games. But we'll start at the top, um, alph alphabetically, um, with AC. So the AC Cobra 427, the 1966 car, was in Test Drive Unlimited and Test Drive Unlimited 2. So that's why I think that will be on there. Um, and then we have the Alfa Romeos, the 8C competition, or competizione. Um, we had that and the convertible um, in the previous games. I think 2007 was the one we had in TDU2, but we have had versions of this in both previous games, so that's where I think that will be on there. Um, also, in terms of new Alfa Romeos, I hope they will have the Giulia Quadrifoglio and the Giulia GTA. So the Quadrifoglio and the GTA will replace the older hatchbacks. We had the small Alfa Romeo hatchbacks in the previous game, so that's why I think those will be there, um, but obviously replaced with the newer um, Julia models, um, which will be interesting. I've put both in, uh, and I'm going to do that with quite a number of cars, um, put in similar models, because you might remember in previous test drive games, we've had different variants of the same car, often the hardtop and the convertible, or slightly different models. So that is always a feature of test drivers walking into the dealership and choosing which version you want. So there's a few cars where I've done that. Um, but that is Alfa Romeo. Um, moving on to Alpine, um, we have the A110 50 concept, um, which is a 2012 concept Alpine, which was actually shown over on the KT website. So that's where I think that will be on there. Um, but it is also a French studio, so I'd expect several other Alpines. So I've put in the two A110s, the 1970s model and the 2017 model, as well as the 1980s uh, GTA or A160, depending on which area you were from. Um, but the sort of 
70s style, um, 70s, 80s style car, uh, the slightly later one. So that's in there as well as the two A110s. I've also put in the Apollo IE, which is a sort of new brand, but it was shown in modelling during the reveal stream, so I think that's pretty much confirmed. Uh, I've put in the Aerial Atom V8, which was obviously in the second game. I want to carry that forward. I've put in a few other sort of track cars like that, which you'll see as we go forward. The Ascari A10, which was in previously. There haven't been any newer Ascaris, so that one I think should remain. Um, it was in TDU2, the 2006 version. Uh, On to Aston Martins, I've updated them. Obviously there was several DB9s and DBSs and things in the previous game. So I've put in the DB11 and DB11 Volante. Obviously we had the DB9 and DB9 Volante in the previous game. And I've also put the DBS Superleggera. We had the DBS in the previous game. And then I've put in the Vantage and the Vantage Roadster. So obviously in the last game we didn't have the Roadster, um, but we did have the Vantage and the V12 Vantage. So I wanted to keep two in there. Um, the main one and the Roadster, which I think looks very, very good actually, the Vantage Roadster. So got both of those in there. I've also put in the Aston Martin DBX. So the first SUV in the list. I have put a number of SUVs as we go forward. Um, so it's not just that one, but a slightly different Aston Martin. And I've also put in the Aston Martin V12 Speedster concept, which is kind of a Speedster version of the Vantage. It's not actually based on the Vantage. It's its own car, but kind of looks a bit like the Vantage. But there's a few of those speedster style cars in this list. Um, that I will get to when we get to those brands. But yeah, put that one in as something a bit different. So that is Aston Martin. Moving on to Audi. I put in the TTRS and the TTRS Roadster. Um, the newer models, I think the newest we've got is 2016. I don't think it's been facelifted since then, but the newest version of the TT, basically. I know we've had the older generations in previous games, in the first one and the second one. Um, the TTRS Roadster was obviously in the second one, but we had performance versions of the TT in both previous games. Um, I'd also like to see the R8 and R8 Spider, the newer models. We did have the older generation in TDU2, so that would be quite cool to see brought forward. I've always also put in the RS3, so a lower end hatchback um, to go potentially with the other starter cars in if the categories will be the same in the A7 or A8 or whatever they end up doing for the lowest asphalt category. But yeah, I've gone for RS3. We had the S3 in TDU2, but obviously RS3 makes more sense. I've also put in the RS6 Avant, the 2020 model. Obviously, we had the older generation in TDU2, but I'd really like to see that brought forward. I'm a big fan of the RS6. Um, I do love that car, so hopefully we'll see that as well. I've also put in the BAC Mono, another track car to go up against the Atom, I guess. Um, but yeah, the only car for... Well, it's the only car they make, so that's in there. Hopefully we will see that. It has been in several other racing games. Um, moving on to another brand that you might not necessarily think um, of when you think of Test Drive. I don't think it's been in either of the previous two. Um, Bentley hasn't actually been in either of the previous games. But I would quite like to see the Continental, um, the new one. Uh, the Continental Convertible, so we've got both variants of it, and... The Bentayga, so the second SUV to go along with that Aston Martin DBX. So those are the three cars I have down for Bentley. Um, next, we move on to BMW, another brand that we've not had before. Um, starting with a bike, the first bike in the list, the BMW S1000RR. So I hope I'm getting these bikes right. I don't know much as much about them as I do about cars, but wanted to throw in a BMW bike. Yeah. Uh, uh, there is a version of this actually in TT, another game by Kiloton, so hopefully that's um, a possible. And yeah, that's why I thought of BMW, because there is a bike in one of their other games. But I have also put in the i8 and i8 Roadster, um, the most interesting, I think, BMWs out there at the moment, probably, the two hybrid cars. Um... So yeah, those are both in there. I haven't put in the older M3, which was actually spotted in V-Rally, I think. There's an old M3 time attack car, so I haven't actually put that one in. But got the two i8s in there. I've also got an M2 as a sort of lower-end performance car. Probably the most sort of driver-focused M car at the moment. 
so that's in there as a lower end cheaper car and finally the m8 which is of course their sort of flagship model um their sports car grand tourer big bmw car so that i'd quite like to see in there i am quite a fan of the m8 i think it looks really good um so that's what i've got in there for bmw moving on to bugatti i've got three versions of the chiron I have messed about with this a bit. I did wonder whether to put in the Veyron and the EB110 and the Chiron. Um, but going back to TDU2, they had several versions of the Veyron. They had the normal Veyron, the Grand Sport, the Super Sport, and then they had some other special editions brought in later as DLC. So I thought I'd go with the Bugatti Chiron, obviously the main car. The Bugatti Chiron 300+, plus, the sort of orange and black car that they did to celebrate hitting 300 miles per hour. And the Chiron per sport so the sort of slightly lower speed track focused one i know it's still a bugatti so it's not very track focused but we've kind of got the standard one the high speed one and the handling one supposedly so a nice little triple of bugattis in there and then we move on to caterham so i know we only had one model in at launch of tdu2 um which i think I can't remember exactly which one it was, but it was quite a low-end Caterham. And then we had the R500 as DLC, which was a more performance-oriented one. So this time I've put in the Caterham 620R. So the interesting thing with this is actually if you go and spec a Caterham on the website now, you choose the engine size, um, which 620 is the highest, and then you choose whether it's a normal car, an S or an R. So the R is the race one. So given that you spec cars up in test drive, maybe it could be that they have the Caterham 620, for example, and you choose whether you want the S parts or the R parts, or maybe you buy it standard and take it to a tuning shop. Um, but yeah, some kind of Caterham definitely needs to be in there. So I've just put the 620R, because that's the top of the range one at the moment. And that is all I've got for Caterham at the moment. So potentially just one that you can tune or spec would be interesting. Um, Chevrolet, I've got the Camaro Z28, the one shown on the website, I believe is the 67 model. So I think that'll be in there as one of the classics, as well as hopefully the ZL1 1LE uh, on the 2018 car, which is in V-Rally already. And we had an older generation Camaro in the previous game, so I think that's quite likely. Um, the Corvette, I think they'll probably put in the C8 if they're going to put any in, so the 2019 C8 car. And obviously we had the older Corvette. Um, before. I'm not sure where... No, I don't think we did actually have many of the new older Corvettes before. We did have the C1, which is the next car on the list. Corvette C1 was, of course, in the first two games, so that's going to be in there um, with some of the classic cars. But yeah, I think the C8 Corvette would be quite interesting. Um, it's not really in anything at the moment. The only game we know that it's coming to is Project Cars 3, I think, so that would be interesting to see in Test Drive as well. Um, I've put the Citroen 2CV in because um, we had it as a wreck in TDU2. So I kind of think that would be fun to either have as a wreck again or in the used car dealership or somewhere or already in your garage or something, um, given that we've already found it in the second game. So maybe that could be fitted into the story somehow. I don't know. Um, moving on to Dodge, I have a couple. The Challenger Head Hellcat, the 2020 model. Um, I wasn't ever a fan of the sort of new... Dodge Charger uh, that was in a previous game, so I've left that out. But I think the Challenger Hellcat and the other one I've got is the Viper, so the 2013 Viper. I don't think they've really updated it since then. Um, but we did have an older Viper before, I think. So Challenger, Hellcat, and Viper are my two for Dodge. Um, moving on to some more bikes, um, I've got some Ducatis. Um, the Desmosa DC, uh, I've no idea if that's right, um, but that, the, the RR was in TDU2 as a DLC bike, so I'm hoping to see that in there as well as the Diavel, um, the other Ducati, which was also a DLC bike in the second game. So obviously not exactly the same models, the newer versions of them, but um, would like to see those in the game. Um, I've not put many bikes in this list, because like I say, I don't know as much about them, and I'm more into cars, so I'm mostly going with cars. Um, the next vehicle is uh, the Eden Buggy that they had in the previous game. So maybe not necessarily exactly the same car, maybe even an aerial nomad or something, but some kind of buggy vehicle that's some kind of prize car that you can't just buy, I think was really cool. Um, so maybe it goes with the other wrecks in some dealership or as a new wreck, there's some kind of buggy to find. So I think that was a cool idea. 
Um, but yeah, not necessarily the same buggy. It was a made-up vehicle, I think, before. But um, even an aerial nomad or some other kind of wild off-road machine would be quite fun. Um, anyway, that brings us on to Ferrari, which is actually quite a long list of cars. Um, you might have known previously in games, it's one of the... Well, in TDU1, I think pretty much every brand had its own dealership, but Ferrari is always one that had its own dealership. We had British cars and stuff for things like Aston's mixed in with Jags, but Ferrari always had enough cars for its own dealership, and there was always Italian classic for the classic Ferraris. So, um, I'm going to start with the classics. Uh, the 250 GTO, um, the 1962 car, I think it was, in both previous games. So I'd like to see that in the third game. It was DLC in the second game. I don't know if it was in the first game. Um, Ferrari 308 GTS was in both games, so I'd like to see that in there. Dino 246 GTS was in both games. Um, Ferrari F40 was in both games, it was DLC in the second game, so I'd like that in there as well. And um, Ferrari Enzo, I'm not sure whether to count that as classic or new at this point, it's getting on, but Ferrari Enzo, um, 2002 car, was in the first two games, so that would be quite good to see brought forward. And carrying on with that theme, um, we've got F40 and Enzo. I've also put in the LaFerrari. Um, although I actually quite like the 288 GTO that came before the F40, but we've got quite a number of classics in here, so I didn't want to squeeze that in as well. And I know a lot of people prefer the F40. Um, so yeah, Enzo, LaFerrari wasn't in the previous two, but the Enzo was, which was their high-end sort of hypercar at the time, so LaFerrari makes sense. And then I've put in their sort of track focused versions of their supercars so the 458 speciali i know a lot of people love that car so that's in there um 488 gtb uh, i haven't got any specials before the speciali because i kind of feel like the older cars do need to go to make room for some of the new ferraris it's a shame i like them but i think they do need to make space for some of the new ferraris we don't have room for all of them so yes 488 gtb um this was actually spotted in the reveal as a model car in the background um, they did say they were going to be adding Ferraris, so that one's not necessarily confirmed, but there was a model of it in the background, a bit like there was with the Dodge Challenger. So I think that is probably going to be in there. So I've got the 488 GTB, the standard 488, and I've also got the 488 Pista to carry on from the 458 Speciali, so the, the sort of special car to carry on from that. Um, I don't like it as much, but a lot of people will want that in there. So... We've got all of those, and then I've also got the Portofino, the newest convertible car, obviously replacing the California, which featured quite heavily in the previous game, so I think that's quite likely. And also the Ferrari Roma, the sort of new hardtop Ferrari that's traced over a Jaguar F-type shape, because they're very imaginative. Um, so I'd quite like to see that in there, it's a very good looking car. And I've also put in, um, I added this quite a lot later to the list, the Ferrari... Uh, Monza, the SP1 or the SP2, I don't know either, or maybe you spec which version you want because they're effectively the same car. Um, but yeah, that fits in with the Aston Martin V12 Speedster that I mentioned earlier. So another of these sort of Speedster cars um, with the Ferrari Monza. I think it would be quite interesting to see in there. There's quite a number of those style cars now, so I think that would fit in well. Um, Moving on to Ford, I've got the Ford GT, the 2006 model, which was actually in first, both first test drive games, TDU1 and TDU2, as well as in V-Rally as a DLC. So I think that's very likely because it's in three other games, um, the two TDUs and obviously another game by KT. So I think that's quite likely because of that. So that's why that one's still in there. And I love the 06. I actually think it looks a lot better than the, the new GT. Um, which is actually the next car. I've got the 2017 GT in the list. Uh, hopefully that will find its way in, because the older generation was in before. Um, and then I've got the 65 Mustang Fastback, so the starter car that we had in in TDU2. Um, but I've put this in because obviously it was in TDU2, but it's also in V-Rally, so potentially we could see that come forward. Um, next up I've got two GT500s, the 2010 model. Um, because it was in the previous test drive and in V-Rally, I think it's quite likely. Um, but I have also put in the 2020 model because I kind of feel like it needs updating. So if we're keeping the old one, we kind of need the new one to go alongside it. Uh, I've also thrown in the Ford Shelby Cobra concept, which we had in the first game. Uh, the 2004 car. 
and as well as that, the Shelby GR1 concept um, from 2005 that we also had in the first game. So I'd quite like to see those come back. Uh, I liked that there was more concepts and things in the first game than in the second, and I really like those too, so hopefully we'll see those come back, um, but I'm not entirely sure. The final Ford is the Focus RS, which would be a new car to the series, another low-end car to go with the RS3 and some of the other things that I've mentioned. Um, maybe not quite as fast as an M2, but that kind of idea, your lower starter car. Um, next up, I've got something a bit crazy, the Janetta Akula, I think it is. So a sort of Janetta concept car. Um, previously, we did have an older Janetta road car in TDU2, so that's why I've put that in there. Um, but as well as that, Test Drive's always been known for these unusual concepts and new cars, so kind of wanted to throw that in. Um, similar with the next car that I've put on the list, which is... Uh, the Gordon Murray T50, which you might have seen recently revealed. Um, I think there's been talk of it before, but it's been revealed very recently. It's got ground effect in the form of a sort of fan that is used to vary the aerodynamics. of. It's a very interesting car. Um, looks a lot like the McLaren F1, um, which makes sense, because uh, if you don't know, that's that was designed by Gordon Murray. So he started his own company building these cars and designing other things like the new TVR. Um, so hopefully that's in there, another of these sort of unusual cars. Um, I think that's a really cool thing. It's, just, it's a three-seater arrangement like the McLaren F1 um, manual gearbox V12 engine. So yeah, really want to see that in there. That's another one of these new unusual cars. Um, next up I have another bike, uh, the Harley Davidson. Um, the, the Harley Davidson fat boy, because that's what was in TDU2. But any kind of new Harley, I think we need at least one of them in there. Um, so I've just put that one in because it was in TDU2, but some kind of Harley Davidson would be interesting to see. Uh, the next vehicle is also a bike, the Honda CBR 1000 RR, or any similar modern Honda superbike. Um, that is actually in um, TT, the Taurus Trophy game, so hopefully we'll see that. Um, Honda cars, I've got the Civic Type R to go with the lower end things like the Focus and the Audi mentioned before. Um, so that would be new to the franchise. And the Honda NSX, the new one, um, to go alongside that in the dealership. So that's it for Honda. Um, for Jaguar, I've got the E-Type, which was, of course, in the first two games. I kind of hope it's the convertible, not the coupe, but the coupe was in previously, so I think that's more likely. Um, so Jaguar E-Type. Jaguar XJ220 in the first game, not in the second, um, but want that to stay in there. I know with the Bugattis, I removed the EB110, which I was going to put in, so I almost got rid of this, but I do like the XJ220, and it was in the first game, so hopefully that will be in there. Uh, next up, a couple of F-types, the S-type, F-type SVR, so the sort of highest performance normal version of the car, if you like, because um, I've also got the F-type Project 7, the convertible, well, not convertible, because it doesn't even have a roof, the sort of D-type inspired one. Uh, obviously, we had the XKs previously, so those would be replacing those. I've also got the Jaguar XE Project 8, which in this image doesn't have the wing. You can have it with or without the wing. I think you can have wing and roll cage or rear seats, um, which again would be quite cool as an option to spec. But yeah, um, that's a bit like the Alpha Julia GTA that I mentioned quite early on. Uh, so that would go alongside that quite well, I think. Um, but yeah, I do love the Project 8, so hopefully that will be in there. Um, but a slightly more unusual one, so maybe not. Um, another bike uh, in the form of the Kawasaki Ninja, um, the ZX-10R Ninja. There was some kind of Ninja in the first game, but yeah, I don't know my bike, so I don't know exactly which model. But hopefully the newest, most powerful version of that, um, if any, will be in the new game. Moving on to Koenigsegg, which I've gone a little bit mad with um, the Agera RS um, which was actually shown in the credits in the trailer um, as well as the Regera um, but we had the CCA and the CCX previously so it would be quite good to see the Agera RS as the sort of older model of Koenigsegg now um, as well as the Regera which was spotted in the reveal um, so it was actually in the trailer and in the credits that so I expect that is quite likely to be in there the Regera I've also put in the Koenigsegg Yesco, the sort of newer car that's potentially going to go for the 300 mile per hour record. So that's in there, as well as the Jamera, the four-seater car, um, the crazy concept thing. I absolutely love that thing. So hopefully that'll be in as a slightly different Koenigsegg. 
Um, moving on to Lamborghini, that obviously we had in the first game, um, but didn't make a return into the second game. I've got the Mura, which was in the first game. Um, so starting with that, I've also got the Diablo SV, which was spotted in the trailer, so we know that's going to be in there. Um, I don't know if we know it's an SV, but Diablo SV. Um, I've also put in this list Gallardo Superleggera, because I love the Gallardo Superleggera. And then I've put in the Murcielago SV to follow on from the Diablo SV um, and fit in between that and the next car, which is the Aventador SVJ. Um, so I'm going to put in that and the SVJ Roadster. Personally, I prefer the SV, but the SVJ is newer and higher performance, so I think it's more likely. So I think that's probably going to be in there. Um, so yeah, SVJ and SVJ Roadster, like I said, I wanted to put the two variants of a lot of them in. Uh, so it'd be quite cool to see those. Next up is the Lamborghini Urus. Uh, I know another high-performance SUV, um, but that is quite a theme of cars manufacturers these days, so a few of them do need to be in there. And I've also put in the Performante and Performante Spider. Again, two var variants, but the highest performance version of the Performante. I know we've had the... of the Hurricane, sorry. I know we've had the Evo, but the Performante was always the high-performance one. So that's Lamborghini. Uh, Lancia, I've put in the Delta HF Integrale, which was obviously in the second game as one of the starter cars, but was also in V-Rally. Uh, I've put in the Fulvia, which is in V-Rally and in WRC 8. Um, so that's in there. And the Stratos, which was in all three, TDU2, V-Rally and WRC 8. Um, so put the three Lancias in there, which I think is quite possible. Um which would be quite cool to see. Uh, I've also put in the Range Rover SVR. We did have a Range Rover Sport in TDU2, um, so I kind of feel like that should be in there uh, as another high-performance SUV, and in the end, it's the original of those sort of luxury SUVs that's so got to be in there if the others are. Uh, Lotus Esprit S3, the third of the starter cars, so that's all three of them in there. Um, we did have the Esprit V8 in the first game, um, but yeah, the S3 was in the second game, so a lot of people know that from that. So I think that's probably more likely than the newer V8 model. Um, but hopefully we'll see that return. Uh, Lotus Elise, I don't think we actually had in the previous game. Um, but that'll be cool. Um, Lotus Six Siege, I think we had the older gen in the original TDU. We might have had an Elise as well, actually. But the newer versions of those two would be cool to see. Um, as well as the Avaya, the new electric Lotus concept. I don't think it's got much further than that, but... I'm pretty sure they are confirmed that they're building it, but that'd be quite cool to see, something electric, something a little bit different. Um, Maserati, the Gran Turismo and Gran Cabrio, so the hardtop and convertible of that model, um, as well as the MC12, which was obviously in the first game. Um, I was getting on a bit now, obviously based on the Enzo, which I've also put in this list, but I think that would be quite cool to see return. I've also put in the Levante, so another SUV, uh, I know, but... Yeah, it fits with all the others, and SUVs are quite big at the Well, the SUVs are big. They're big cars. Um, but yeah, they're quite a thing at the moment, so... Uh, I have put a few of them in there, because that's kind of... The whole point of test drivers is if we have a variety of cars in your collection, so... I've put that in there. Um, McLaren, I've put in the F1. Uh, just the standard F1. I know we had lots of variants of it in the first game, but the F1's the iconic one, and that would sit well along that side that Gordon Murray fan car that I mentioned earlier so I've put that in I've also put the P1 in um, obviously the successor to the F1 um, that's getting on quite a bit now but obviously wasn't in the last game because it came out quite a number of years after that um, McLaren Senna uh, another of the sort of high performance cars and the McLaren Speedtail um, there's two sort of hyper cars that they're producing at the moment I thought should be in there I've also thrown in the 765 LT into the list, the newest in the line of LT cars. I feel like that should be in there. Something a bit more, well, a bit more ordinary than the hypercars, but still a, the highest performance version. So it's based on the 650S, obviously, um, not 650, 720S, obviously, 765 LT, but the LT car rather than the standard car. So I've put that in there. But I've also put in the McLaren Elva. Um, the sort of speedster thing to go along with the Aston V12 speedster and the Ferrari Monza that I mentioned earlier. So those three, I think, would be quite a cool set of cars in there. Um, but yeah, that brings us on to Mercedes. So I've got the 300 SL, 
1957 car, I think was the year we had in the first and second game, so that comes forward. Um, that's why I put it in there, because it was in the previous two games. Um, the Mercedes SLR McLaren Roadster 722S, yes, it's quite a long name, uh, that was in the second game, but I love the SLR, and it's not been in a lot of games. Well, Forza dropped it after Horizon 3, which I think is a shame. But it is still in the Crew 2 and Gran Turismo, so there's not an issue with licensing, as I previously thought. So hopefully that will make its way in. It is an older car, um, now being 2008. And yeah, we had an older version of it in the original TDU, as well as that version being in TDU 2. So hopefully that will make its way in. I've also put down the Mercedes AMG GTR Black Edition, um, which I know has only recently been unveiled. We don't know a lot about it. Um, but previously, obviously, we had the SLS and those kind of cars, and the AMG GTR Black is the newest sort of performance Mercedes we've got. So hopefully we'll see that. I've also put in the AMG GTR Roadster, the limited edition um, of the AMG GTR with the roof cut off. I don't think they built many of them. Um, but that goes quite well along with the black, having the convertible and the hardtop sort of track-focused car. I know we've got the GTR Pro, but the black's going to be more hardcore than that, so that's kind of the one we want, as well as the convertible. Uh, next up, I've got the only Mitsubishi that I've put in the list, the Lancer Evo. Um, this is in there because, well, obviously it's in V-Rally and WRC, it's quite a well-known rally car, but this was also leaked on Reddit a while ago as one of the three starter cars that you'll get in the game. So that's why that's in the list, um, if that leak is correct. That was quite a long time before the game was revealed that that was put out. Um, then that will be one of the starter cars, and we'll get to the other two that were leaked lower down the list. Um, but I have mentioned them previously, but yeah. That was leaked, and a version of it is in WRC and V-Rally, so potentially we could see that come forward. Not exactly sure which model of the Evo. I'd assume it was the Evo 10, the new one, but... I think the ones in the rally games are slightly older, so we don't really know. Um, next up, more bikes. I've got MV Augusta, the 5000 CC3, which is a 1972. It's sort of a classic racing bike, um, but that is in TT, so um, it's in another game by KT, so I don't see why it wouldn't come forward. Um, I should say with all of these bikes, bikes haven't even been confirmed, so I'm just guessing they're in there based on TDU1 and TDU2. Um, but I do have a second MV Augusta. The F4 1000, the 2006 bike, which was in the first game, um, but not in any of the others or anything else by KT. So hopefully you'd see a new one and a classic one, um, although that is the only classic bike I've got in the list. So who knows? But I would quite like to see them in there. Uh, next up, I've got the Nissan GTR Nismo. We did have the standard GTR in TDU2, so I kind of feel like an upgrade from that would be the Nismo. Um, we also had a 370Z, but I've left that out. Um, but I have put in the Nissan GTR 50, which is the 50th anniversary of GTR, I guess. I can't actually remember what it was done for, but the sort of mad-looking futuristic concept of a GTR. So that alongside the Nismo would be quite cool. And then that fits the test drive theme of having more than one variant of certain cars. Um, it's not quite the same car, but that would be very cool to see in there. I don't think that's been in any games, really, the GTR 50. Um, moving on from that, I've got a couple of Nobles. We did have some kind of Noble, I think, in the older games. Um, it might have just been in the first game, actually. But I've got the Noble M500. So you've probably heard of the M600. The M500 is a new car they're developing at the moment, which is slightly um, less um, track-focused, I guess, than the M600. It's a slightly softer version of the car. So I've got the M500 in as the newest um, car coming from Noble. Um, but I have also got the M600 in, um, which is the car a lot of us know, but that has been around for a while now, so that's less likely, but I would quite like to see both of those in there. Um, next up is another bike, um, the Norton V4RR, which is in TT, um, so potentially could find its way into this game. Uh, it's another new sort of superbike style thing, but mad looking thing, so that would be quite cool to see. Um, next up, I've got a few Paganis. I've got the Zonda C12S Roadster, um, one of the older Paganis, but only because it's been in both previous test drives. It would be quite cool to see it in the third game and make it a triple um, for that, so that it's been in all three. That would be quite cool to see. Um, I've also got the Pagani Zonda Cinque, which was in the second game, uh, the sort of craziest edition of the Zonda, if you like. I know they did the Zonda R and Revolution and 
all of that stuff, um, but they weren't road legal. That's another thing I've tried to do with this list. I've tried to keep all the cars road legal, because in the end we are going to be driving them around an island or a one-to-one -one scale map. It's going to be an open world thing. So I always find it a bit weird driving cars that are track only and not road legal around roads in a game. So yeah, the Zonda Cinque is the sort of maddest Zonda we've got in there. I've also got the Pagani Wire, the, the standard one, um, as well as the Wire BC. Like I say, it's good to have the different versions of cars. I did want some kind of Wire um, convertible, but I thought those two and this other one that I've put in there, the Pagani Imola, um, which they insist isn't a Wire, but it is, it's a Wire Imola really, isn't it? Um, but Pagani Imola, another version of that car. So I thought with three versions of that, we can't really try and squeeze convertibles in as well. Um, as much as I'd love to see those alongside, but I think those three would be a brilliant lineup in the game. Um, next up, Porsche, which we know is confirmed because it's, well, we, we know the 918 is confirmed, so we'll start with that, because um, it's actually shown in the trailer. Um, but Porsche has been confirmed, it was in the licensing and stuff as well, so we're pretty sure that will be in there. So uh, I've got the 918. I've also put in the Carrera GT as the sort of predecessor to the 918, but also the word Carrera was spotted in the licensing. So potentially that's what they're going to use that for. Um, and I absolutely love the Carrera GT, so that would be really cool to see in there. Obviously, we've not had Porsche in either previous games because of trouble with licensing, because Need for Speed owned it. Um, exclusive rights were for ages. Um, so Carrera GT 918. Um, also spotted in the credits or in the sort of small print below the trailer, um, was Porsche Cayenne. They've got licensing for Cayenne. So that makes me think it'll, I've kind of looked for the newest one, which is the Cayenne Coupe, um, the sort of new one that's been released not that long ago. So potentially that could be in there, although it could just be the more standard Cayenne. But either way, um, there is going to be some kind of Cayenne in there because that was in the licensing. Um, I've also thrown in a classic Porsche, the 911 RS 2.7, um, sort of the most, well, when I think of classic 911s, that's what comes to mind. So that's what I've put in there. Yes, it would be cool to have like a 356 or something. But yeah, 911 RS 2.7 is the classic I've thrown in there for Porsche. And then I've also put in the 911 Turbo, um, which is the turbo of the 992 generation. It's just because it's the kind of highest spec um, 992 generation 911 we've got at the moment. Um, but potentially they'd put in the new GT3 RS. I know that's been spy-shotted around, but it's not actually been revealed yet. So maybe once that's revealed, that would be in there. Um, but at the moment, I think it would be the Turbo, because that's the highest highest end of the new 911 that we've got at the moment. I did kind of want to put in the GT3 RS, um, an older version, because it was spotted in, I think it's in V-Rally. But I kind of thought if they're going to put one in, it's going to be the new gen, so potentially the older one won't be in there. Um, same for the GT2 RS, it's the old generation now, so I think they're more likely to put in the new 911 Turbo or 911 GT3 or GT3 RS once it's out. The only other Porsche I have got in the list is the Porsche Taycan. So something a bit different, something electric, an electric sort of saloon car. And yes, we don't have the Tesla Model S in this list, so yeah, I don't know. It's just, I, I quite like it. Um, I find it quite interesting uh, as a sort of electric car I guess um, I mean yes there are other there is the loads of iron things in here but that's more this is more of a saloon that's a supercar so a bit different um, next up I've got some roofs so although Porsche is in there I would quite like to see roof remain although the three I've put in there weren't actually in the previous game um, so obviously we did have a number of them in the previous games um, but mostly because they couldn't get a Porsche license as I explained before um, but the three I'd like to see in there, if they're going to keep roof, is the CTR Yellowbird, the original 1980s one, just because it's an, an icon. Um, the new CTR Yellowbird, the 2020 car, because I think that'd be a really nice pairing. Um, not the other. I know there's another new roof, which I was very tempted to put in, um, along with that, that kind of looks like the Yellowbird. So I've got those two in. And I've also got the roof CTR3 Club Sport, which is the newest variant of the CTR3, um, which, yes, they are still making. I did check. Um... So those three would be cool, two that they make, and one one classic, um, maybe in a classic dealer with the old 911 RS 2.7 and stuff like that. I can imagine having those side by side in your garage. Um, so that's those. Uh, next up, I have the Renault Clio RS, um, which I've got in there because that was another Reddited Leak car 
or Red Elite car, along with the Evo as one of the potential starter cars for the game. Um, that is the only Renault I've got in the list, because um, I'm not a massive fan, but I suspect there will be more, being that it's being developed by a French um, studio. KT is a French studio, so I think there'll be more. Um, that's why I've got loads of Alpines. I think there will probably be more Renaults than just the Clio RS. Um, but yeah, I've got that in because it was leaked as one of the starter cars, if that is correct. I've also got the Shelby Cobra Daytona 1963 car because it was in the first two TDU games. That's why that's in the list. I've also got Spikers. I've got the C8 um, Aileron Spider, which I think was the one in TDU 2 that you could win at the casino, which I never got because I never had the casino. Um, but that or whatever the most recent C8 was, I don't think they still make anything but uh, Spiker. But yeah, the C8 I've always loved and would like to see in there. Um, next up, I have the Spiker D8 pecking, um, pecking to Paris concept, which was obviously in the second game, um, which was hard to find a good image of, so sorry about the dodgy picture, because um, it was only really ever a concept. Um, but yeah, I'd love to see that come forward, because that's not been in anything else, really, and it's a bit of a crazy-looking thing, and along with all the other SUVs, that would be cool, because um, that was the only kind of high, high-performance SUV before all the others were like Audis and VWs and things, so that would be cool. Uh, I've also got the Subaru WRX STI. Uh, obviously, we had the older version of this in the game, um, but if we've got the Evo, if that leaks correct, it would only make sense to have the Subaru alongside it. I know we didn't have the Evo before, um, but that pairing would be quite cool to see. So Subaru and Pret's WRX STI would be interesting to see. Uh, I've also got uh, another bike, final bike on the list, is the Triumph Daytona, which was in the first game and is in TT. I don't know if it's exactly the same version of the bike, um, but give it, given it's in both, I'd kind of hope to see that come forward. Next up, I have the TVR Griffith, um, the new one, which obviously done by Gordon Murray Design, who did the T50 that I mentioned earlier, the sort of mad fan car thing. So, um, yeah, I'd love to see that in. I know it's still not been into production. It's taking a long time, but that's a cool thing. Um, designed by Gordon Murray with the big Ford engine in it, Ford V8. Um, we did obviously have the older TVR previously, so I think that's quite likely. Um, next up, VW, starting with another Reddit leak for the first car. Um, so this is the third starter car out of the three, potentially, is the Polo GTI, which is in, um, or there is a Polo in V-Rally and WRC. Obviously, it's a rally modified one, um, but it is in both of those games, and it has been leaked over on Reddit, so that is kind of possible. Um, I've also got the Golf R. We had the GTI in TDU2, but the R is the highest end Golf now, but obviously sits along with the Focus RS and um, Civic Type R and those kind of things that I mentioned earlier, so that we've at least got um, a collection of cars for that lower race category, um, assuming they're going to do it the same. I've also got the VW Beetle, um, because it was a wreck in TDU2, so if that was uh, like the Citroen and the Buggy, if it was either in a dealership or you had to find them again, um, that would be quite cool to carry those kind of features and things forward. Uh, I've also got the Volkswagen W12, which obviously wasn't in the second game, but in the first game we had that and the convertible. Didn't want to put both in because it's quite a dated concept now, which is probably why they removed it from the second game, but I would quite like to see that come back. Uh, I've also got the Weissman MF5 in here. I think it was the MF3 in both previous games, but since then they have updated the car with the MF4 and MF5, which are very similar to the MF3, um, but an updated version of the MF3 would be cool to see. I never had it in the second game because I didn't realise you had to go and win it from a, I think it was from a club or something, um, but it was in both previous games, so that would be cool to see the new version. And then I'm going to finish off the list with the Zenvo ST1. Um, that's the first of two Zenvos, by the way, um, which would be a new brand to the game, but one of these unusual gra brands that Test Drive's been so well known for, um, putting things like Koenigsegg and Spiker in before they were well known. So yeah, I've got that one. And the second Zenvo, you've probably already guessed, is the TSRS. So that thing with the wobbly spoiler that recently got added to Forza is my second Zenvo in the list. Um, but there you go, that does bring you to the end of the 150 cars. Um, has been quite a long video in the end, I think. Um, going through that list is quite a number of cars. Um, but yeah, hopefully that makes you see how much 150 actually is. Because people kind of say 100 or 150 for a list, and everyone's like, oh, that's not enough. Games like Forza have 700. But it's actually quite a lot of cars, isn't it? 
Think about how long it's going to take you to buy all of those if you get the game and you're saving up for everything. Um, although having said that, that doesn't take too long in Forza because they throw money at you. But yeah, hopefully in this it will be more of a car collecting game, a bit like the previous ones. But I think that is quite a quite a good list. Obviously, that's just a lot of those cars, in my opinion, um, of what I'd like to see and what I think will be in there. Uh, obviously, all the ones that have already been revealed and in previous games and on the KT website and stuff are, are more likely in things that have been leaked. Obviously, some of them are already confirmed. But yeah, if, the, if that was the 150 cars we started with, uh, assuming we're starting with a number roughly like that, I would be quite happy um, if the list was anything like that. Um, but yeah, I know there's a number of brands and things I've missed out, but these are the cars I would like to see. I know a lot of you will be um, shouting at the video that I missed Toyota, or that's probably the most the, the one I can think of um, that's most obviously missing that a lot of people will be angry about. There's no Supras, um, but Toyota is still funny about licensing, we think. So they've they've allowed it into Forza because they were paid a lot of money and it was in Gran Turismo because Gran Turismo. But yeah, things like that are missing. So, um, but yeah, if there's anything you particularly would like to see in there, um, let me know in the comments. But yeah, that's just my list, my thoughts, what I'd quite like to see from the game and what I think is a possible um, car list, mostly going for things I think are quite likely. Um, but yeah, there we go. It has been a bit of a longer video, but a more in-depth look at cars I would like to see in the game rather than just a look at what might be in the car list, like the slightly briefer videos before on cars and bikes. Um, but yeah, it has ended up being quite a long one. Um, but yeah. Hopefully you did still enjoy this video and that will be all for today. So thank you very much for watching and I will be back with the next video very soon.